her okay. morning fellow Toastmaster, or the Toastmaster and fellow members. Everyone in this room has been diagnosed with some sort of disease or illness, be it a cold, the flu, or something more serious, such as heart disease or cancer. In my case, my diagnosis was the alphabet thrown at me. ADD, ADHD, PTSD. But the one I really was angry with was when my doctor said, she's stoic. Because at the time, I equated being stoic with being complacent. And even though my doctor saw me as stoic, on the inside, I am a rolling boil of emotion. So I'm a poet. I write poetry to cope with that. In 1967, my brother was a Marine. His, his senior trip was Vietnam. I wrote him a poem. If you want the background music, think Credence Clearwater, you gotta run through the jungle. <laughs> or Fortunate Son, I ain't no senator's son, man. So with that being said, I'll tell you the poem. The name of the poem is A Letter from Danny. Well, here I am in the middle of Nam, sitting on a rock just thinking of home. Don't ask me how I got here, cause hell, I don't know. When Uncle Sam calls, you better go. You sit there watching your TV set and the man on the news says five more are dead. You turn to your wife and say, ain't it a shame? But how would you feel if it was your son's name on that long list of many giving his life for the land of plenty? I hope you listen to me and I hope you listen well because brother, I got a story to tell of blood and sweat and hate and hell. We were walking through the desert late one night, 40 green men on a field of white. When all of a sudden out of the black, a light shined down and lit up our backs. It's a Cyclops, man, I heard my sergeant yell. If we get hit, I'll meet you in hell. That plane circled round and called me a liar. It was chewing up sand and spitting out fire. The guy next to me was hit pretty bad. And I'll never forget the words that he said. You go back and tell those damn politicians. Send over more guns and more ammunition. Keep sending their orders from half the world away while going to church on Sunday to kneel down and pray. He gritted his teeth and with his last breath said, I'm a man, pal, but I'm afraid of death. They put him on a truck and took him away along with 20 others that had died that day. So while you sit there watching your TV set and the man on the news says 21 more are dead, I hope to God you feel more than shame because friend, somebody there is to blame. Well, here I'm in the middle of Nam, just sitting on a rock thinking of home. So my brother returned to us physically unharmed. And one of his favorite jokes is, how many Vietnam vets does it take to screw in a light bulb? Me, I don't know, Dan. Dan, that's right, you don't know because you weren't there. And that's a true joke because there aren't any rocks in Vietnam. So the next poem I have is my son, my, my firstborn child was diagnosed with schizophrenia when he was 19 years old. And to cope with that, I wrote a poem. But first I bought a house on Court Street that had a full basement and he could live with me on and off through the years and he did. Uh, the reason I wrote this poem and the way I got the idea for it was from Vincent Van Gogh who had a bunch of sketches, say six in a row of pen and ink drawings of a cat. And the first sketch, it's a beautiful Persian, long hair. You know, it looks like your house cat. You could pet it. But by the end sketch in the series, it had turned into some kind of grotesque monster. So the name of this poem is, The Cat is Changing. The cat is changing. You are not forewarned by the luminescence of the moon or the seasons of the year. The cat changes still, playing little mouse games stalking your mind as you walk the house at night, searching for sanity. Its claws pull you into a surreal existence and its jaws devour reality. You feed it. The sun shines bright, absorbing the current, 
smoothing the spiked fur. A mewing kitten retreats to the corner, but granted one more reprieve, you remember, the cat changes still. My son lost his battle with that disease and died in 1995. One of my favorite things to do in the 80s was to pack up my daughter Amber, who was 11 at the time, and take her to Spokane, Washington. It was 155 miles away. Christopher Aponte was the uh, artistic director, choreographer, and leader of the Spokane Ballet Company at that time. And I wrote a poem for Amber to document that. And it's called, You at the Ballet. You were right, Mama, she said, as the hoops from her slip spilt lavender satin into the lap of a stranger. The lights dimmed. When she threw her into the air, you gasped, visualizing all of that brittle beauty broken on the stage. You failed to see the muscle beneath the gossamer cloth. Why did I join Toastmasters? Well, I was at the city park about a week ago, and I, it was art in the park, and I saw Isabel. She remembered me from Toastmasters, and she came and gave me a great big hug. <laughs> so I joined for the friendship, for the communication between me and my fellow passengers in the limited time we have on this earth. And maybe being stoic isn't such a bad thing. Maybe being stoic is just accepting the things you cannot change. Mr. Toastmaster.